All right, there's the man right there. Richard Reardon was mayor here for eight years in Los Angeles. He's written a memoir about his time in office and also about his life, and you've been pretty open and honest about uh, yeah. good things and some not so good things. First of all, it's good to see you, Dick. So good to see you, Steve. Steve. Thank you for coming in. Uh, before we get to play a little bit, I have a couple of questions for you, and, and we'll move on here. Uh, first question I want to ask you. You were a Republican. Yeah. Republicans never get elected in Los Angeles. You got elected. <laughs> but today, could you get a seat at the Republican table? Would you even qualify given your, your pro-gay marriage and pro-immigration and all those things? Uh, it might be pretty tough. I, uh, I ran for governor, and that's why I couldn't get through the primary is that's because right. of the right-wing Republicans. But I'm hoping that the Republican Party gets smarter this time mm. and has somebody in the middle. My father used to say, this is a story of Mr. McVeigh who died defending his right away. Mm. And that's what these right-wing Republicans are doing. They're killing the party. They're killing the country because they're the ones that have the right ideas on the finances of the country and things like that. But then they tell people that they disagree with them on all the right. social issues. Right. Do you so find that dead. so frustrating? Very frustrating. Yeah. yeah. And to a lot of those people who have been the core of, of yeah. you call it a Tea Party, but it's a lot of other people as well, they uh, kind of view you as a rhino or a Republican name only, right. or a communist. Take, <laughs> yeah, take your choice. I've been called every Depending yeah. on who you ask, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. All right, uh, a couple of other things. When you became mayor, this city was a mess. So many things happened. You set that up. Go ahead. Well, we had had the Rodney King riots. We'd had the first uh, recession in Los Angeles. The public media, particularly the national media, had sold L.A. down the river. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you, ironically, it was the Northridge earthquake that turned us around. That was a year after right. yeah. I became mayor. Yes. And what happened then, and I, I'll take some credit for empowering people. I tell people, don't wait for government. You do it yourself. Take care of your house, your neighbor's house, your neighbor's business, whatever you can do to make this city better. But just get it done. Mm -hmm. And you did. And, and they did. And they did. And your approach to that was unique in yeah. how you took care of it and yeah. in how fast things really got cleaned up. You know, by getting the right people, like getting the private sector to repair the broken bridges, it took two months where it took San Francisco 15 years to do it. Uh, after the Loma Prieta earthquake. That's right. You, you basically pulled people in a room from yeah. every agency, federal, local, state, yeah. et cetera, and say, get it done. Let's just get yeah. it done. Uh, you got a mayor now, Garcetti. Yeah. How's he doing? Do I have to answer that? Yes, <laughs> absolutely. How's he doing? I think, you know, he's capable of doing a lot. He's brilliant, very articulate, but he doesn't know how to get things done. What you have to do is Bring the brightest people around you and empower them to do their job. Don't make the public have to think that I'm doing everything. Other people are doing it. Mm -hmm. How was Villaraigosa as mayor? Pardon? Villaraigosa, how was he? Well, ironically, the first six years, I would have said the same thing about Villaraigosa. But the last two years, he put around him some of the brightest people in L.A. He had Austin Butner in economics, Joan Sullivan uh, in education. And Gay Williams, who was one of my deputy mayors, as his chief of staff. Yeah. And all of a sudden, things turned around in the city. What was the biggest mistake you made as mayor? Is there one that stands out? Oh, God, everybody asks me that. And it was, I think signing the consent decree uh, with the uh, attorney for the, general. For the police department? For the police yes. department, where it costs us about $30 million a year. We could have put four or 500 police permanently more on the streets if we had used the money for that. For that. All right, uh, another thing. Uh, people don't often understand that we have what's called a weak mayor situation yeah. here. In New York, the mayor can do whatever he wants. He appoints, he hires, yeah. and fires. It's not true here, is it? Well, you know, I, I have the theory perceived power can be turned into real power. And you mm. take the Northridge earthquake, the state constitution says in an emergency, the county takes over. Mm -hmm. I took over after the earthquake, right. and the county never questioned me. They let me do it. The state let me do it. The federal government let me do it. So I think we have got pro it done. probably glad that somebody took over. Yeah, you know, they were. Yes. And, but 
so you know we have more power than the, the books say. And then, right. of course, uh, when I was in office, we uh, put amendments to the state to the city charter, and the main one is that you can hire and fire the heads of departments. Mm -hmm. And that's a change. Now we're going to go another route here. Let's put up some pictures of. This oh, I have one picture in particular. <laughs> this one? Okay. Let me set the scene. 1993 okay. City Hall, your inauguration. There's this gentleman standing to your right in the back. Let's see, do we have that picture? We should have that picture. I think I know who you mean. Oh, what do you know? Who that is? <laughs> Where? <laughs> you show me Steve. We have to Photoshop Look at the some guy with white hair. We need like the little circle thing, you know, that they, they use in sports. <laughs> now, that was your inauguration. Right behind me wow. is Mayor Tom Bradley. Yep. And this was the handoff. This is the very moment of the handoff, your first moment speaking as mayor. And I was uh, chosen to be the MC for the inauguration. Wow. You, you know what bothered me about it? People today say, who's that next to Steve Edwards? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm looking at that saying, is that Steve Edwards? Uh, that captures the enthusiasm, so though. You were so enthusiastic yeah. on that day. Such an exciting time. You have some time. great, great I didn't pictures know you were there. In here. Yeah, with, with your a, brown hair. With the brown hair, with oh, the I big. Love that. Uh, let's uh, a couple of other quick pictures, if we can put them up here of you. Uh, we all these are selected out of your book. Uh -huh. Look at this cute little boy but here. In the book, oh, you, you start in the beginning. You know, you well, take us back yeah. through your childhood. And we all start in the beginning. That's right. Now how much imagine. of your How much of your personal life do you talk about? Well, some people say too much because oh. <laughs> I'm pretty honest about it. My mm -hmm. first wife, Jeannie. Uh, I cheated on her, yeah, which I shouldn't that. have had. Yes. And uh, right now, she and I date each other. Right now, she got she... remarried. Her husband died. Is that right? You're and, dating now, and, and she sees the best in you. Well, That's she doesn't great. remember any of the bad things. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? That is perfect. Oh, oh love goodness. is lovelier That's the great. second time around. Now, you, yeah. you, you've always had a great spirit. You've had a lot of tragedy in your life. Mm -hmm. The book is there. You've had two children. You've lost. Heartbreakingly, I mean, just heartbreakingly at young mm. ages, and yet you manage to go on with a smile on your face. Mm. What do you have to tell people who are watching now who have experienced these kind of tragedies? Oh. How do you go on? Well, you can't give up in life. There are other people who depend on you, uh, and uh, you can, you know, what, after my children died, I cried for days after that, but in between crying, I would just get my job done. And I think you have to, you have a duty to get things done and yeah. to think ahead. And your tragedies, you know, are key apart. Now, I have three ch girls alive now who are my daughters. And I had, when I was mayor, there were people who had their only child murdered mm -hmm. by somebody. Mm -hmm. And I say, oh God, now I'm not sure I could have ex handled yeah. that. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. right. Wow. All right. Uh, we well, love that you're dating your, your wife. That's who the put up with so story. much with you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, Richard Reardon will be signing copies of his new book at Diesel Bookstore in Brentwood tonight at 7 o'clock. The book the mayor is out now. You'll see the mayor all over town. Especially at the pantry. Especially. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Great to see you. Thanks, Thanks Steve. for coming Thanks. in. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank Thank you. So Are you still teaching at UCLA? Three yeah, months. I still teach Leadership classes? Oh, sure, we you. have a good football team. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay, we'll see you. Thank you so much. Thank you.